Uh, this series of webinars and myself. Uh, my name is Jennifer Shirk. I'm the interim executive director for the Citizen Science Association and really pleased that this uh, series of webinars is getting underway for the community of folks who are leading and managing citizen science projects. Uh, we're really excited as SA to be starting some professional development webinars included to help build and advance the practice that we're all undertaking, whether that's as a practitioner, an evaluator, a researcher, or a participant. Um, and really pleased to have Catherine joining us to talk about SciStarter. Before we get into that, I just wanted to briefly say um, thank you for joining in this series. Um, and uh, remind us all that as the CSA, we're working to advance citizen science as a whole um, so that we can be reaching uh, practitioners across the globe um, to promote the, the practice of citizen science. And we have these, uh, this series of uh, webinars coming up. Um, the next one, although it hasn't formally been announced, I'm pleased to say will be a webinar on the culture of peer review and an introduction to uh, journals in general offered by our um, editorial leadership of the Citizen Science Theory and Practice Journal. Um, the webinar will be January 18th at 1 o'clock Eastern Time US. Um, and Rick Bonney, who is the um, lead editor of uh, our own journal, will talk not so much about this journal, Citizen Science Theory and Practice, but more generally the culture of peer review and what it means to enter into the process of peer review and how um, our journal is trying to foster and broaden um, that process to the citizen science community. So really pleased that that's coming as well. Following that will be a webinar on Citizen Science Day for anyone who's planning an event for that. Um, and that's yet to be scheduled, but we're looking at late February or early March. Um, so again, thanks for joining us. I am letting everyone know just before we launch into this that um, we are recording. You can feel free to join the chat on the right uh, and introduce yourself. Um, but right now, I'm going to turn the webinar over to Catherine to take it away. Catherine is the project manager of SciStarter 2.0 and really pleased to have her sharing the details of using that tool um, for a wide range of practices. So Catherine, thanks so much for hosting this for us. Great, thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here today to share um, some insights from SciStarter and what we've been up to in the past um, two years or so and, and give you guys lots of tools and information to get started using the platform. So I just have um, this slide up here. Please take, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself in the chat box, kind of let us know what your role in citizen science is. This also kind of helps me as we're going to get an idea of um, who our audience is and making sure that I'm kind of hitting things that you might be interested in. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to add them in the chat bar box or through the q and I'll do my best to answer anything um, that's kind of a clarification question as I go, and then we'll have some time at the end for more detailed Q&A, and of course, um, you know, detailed questions that are really specific, I'm happy to answer those via email as well. So today we're going to be talking about SciStarter, um, this how-to for participants, project leaders, and researchers. So hopefully everybody kind of fits within there somewhere or maybe all of the above. So to get you guys started, let's think about what citizen scientists do. And so here's sort of a little quiz. And if you want to, you can pop your answer again in that chat box. Which of these do you kind of think is true? Do citizen scientists regularly participate in more than one project? Do they often quit a project when they don't receive feedback from a project leader? Do they collect better data when they've participated in multiple projects or all of the above? So you may have realized it's, yep, I see a lot of uh, answer Ds coming into the chat box and it is all of the above. And these are sort of three things that I kind of pulled out for us to um, think about today as we're moving through and learning about how SciStarter can kind of help with these sort of A, B, and C and common things that we're learning from citizen scientists. 
So what is SciStarter? For those of you who are unfamiliar, we are a place to find, join, and track contributions to citizen science projects. And throughout the presentation, you'll hear kind of reference to what is SciStarter 2.0. And this is a um, National Science Foundation funded grant to kind of uh, renovate SciStarter. And so we have a kind of a suite of new tools and features that we refer to as 2.0. So if you hear that throughout the talk, um, that's what it's really just referencing the new SciStarter that's available and all the great tools for you. And SciStarter 2.0 is a collaboration between multiple different organizations between SciStarter, Arizona State University, North Carolina State, the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences, and again, uh, funded through the National Science Foundation. So SciStarter serves multiple different audiences, and again, um, we really serve to, to help all of these different audiences. SciStarter aims to be first and foremost a place for people to find projects to participate in. So we're very participant focused and drive a lot of our um, actions based around what works for a volunteer and how that enhances a participant experience. We also, of course, serve project leaders. We'll be talking a lot about today how SciStarter can help manage and promote your project through the field of citizen science. We also help researchers and evaluators who are trying to understand the field of citizen science as the biggest database of citizen science projects who really help people understand what's going on across a broad scale of citizen science as a place to hold a lot of information. And we also serve formal and informal STEM resource providers or anyone who's trying to kind of get people engaged in citizen science, even if you don't necessarily run a citizen science, so citizen science projects. So we'll definitely be talking today about how you can um, help people get involved in citizen science. So the goals for today's webinar, just briefly, we're gonna be talking about how to manage your project through, through SciStarter, um, seeing that many of you are involved in citizen science or looking to be involved in managing a project. I'll talk a little bit about those new NSF funded tools, show you how to use our analytics on site for both um, project manager based uh, analytics as well as more broad analytics that are available to researchers and evaluators. And then at the end, I'll give you guys a bit of a sneak peek about some new features and opportunities that we're working on. And throughout this talk, um, we, I have a lot to talk about, and so I'm not going to get to really dive deep into any one thing. So um, please feel free to reach out. Um, our emails will be at the end of this webinar. If there's anything that you know, strikes your interest and you want to know more about that I can't answer, please, please reach out, and I'm happy to go into more detail there. So first, we're going to be looking at SciStarter for project leaders. So the first thing that's really important about SciStarter is if you have a citizen science project to add it to SciStarter. So I've pasted that link up there for you guys to figure out how to add your project if you haven't added a project yet. And I have three tips here at the bottom in terms of when you add your project to SciStarter, what do you need to be really keeping an eye out for? The first one is to be specific and be authentic. And what I mean by this is when you are describing your project that for the citizen scientists who are interested in joining, be specific about what they're going to be doing and um, how they're going to be participating. What types of outcomes are you looking for with the project? That's really going to get people excited and engaged in the project, the more detail that you can provide. The next thing is that being authentic. Um, this just means that be honest about how your, what your project is and what it's about because that's going to be more appealing to people. So the example I tend to give for this is if your project is um, about, let's say, climate change in the Rocky Mountains, and it has to do with insects, and you're asked to include different topics for your project. Even though, let's say, food might be kind of part of your project because the insects are food for other animals in the ecosystem, so you want to check that topic, it's going to make it show up more frequently. That can actually be a lot harder for the person trying to find a project because that's, they're kind, there's a kind of a mismatch there between the way that um, you've described your project and the way that somebody who's looking to join is sort of thinking about your project. So be authentic about what your project's about and being specific will really make sure the right people are finding your project when they're looking for it. Second tip is that your where field. You'll be asked to include information about where your project can be done. And again, make sure you fill that out. Um, and it's also really important that if you manage a local project, please don't shy away from adding your project to SciStarter because you think it should only be for um, you know, global projects or things that can be done anywhere. 
we really find a lot of people who are looking for that opportunity that's only you know, in their community or in their state. And sometimes those project owners haven't added it to SciStarter and they're missing out on the people who are looking for those opportunities. So local volunteer you know, water quality monitoring, you know, insect collection, anything that's localized, please don't shy away from adding that to SciStarter. And the third tip there is updating your project regularly. This is something that we reiterate to new project owners on SciStarter and people who already have projects on SciStarter. The more regularly you update your project, it's gonna be more likely to be found by the people who are interested in joining it. And when we do promotions, which I'll talk about in a, in a moment, um, we're more likely to kind of look at projects that we see have been updated regularly that we know maybe have a new campaign or a new goal and we're likely to kind of latch onto that and help promote that. So please make sure you update your project regularly. If you've got somebody who manages the project and kind of has a checklist of what to do every, you know, six months, just add updates, I starter project, you know, check on it, make sure that it's all up to date on that list and that will be a big help. So here's a few other things when you're looking at adding your project and these are, um, this is one thing that a lot, sometimes people get tripped up on, so I just wanted to point it out here. Um, we have an opportunity to do a one-click sign-up process on SciStarter. So what this means is that if, you're, if you want people to basically get started in your project right away through SciStarter and to sign up for it through SciStarter, you can enable this. And then at the bottom, you'll see it, you can add a custom email message. So what this means is if, let's say, your project, um, you know, only can be done at a certain time, you can kind of include that in that email message, letting them know when you're gonna reach out again, or if there's a certain tool or a piece of equipment that somebody needs, you can get that information to them right away, so there's no delay in them getting started in your project because they're trying to find out the right materials that they need. So now we're gonna look kind of at project management as a whole, and um, we're gonna look at the steps through um, through what we consider project management. So I see one question that just popped up here about um, SciStarter kind of in an international sc scope. And we do have projects from across the world within SciStarter. So again, very much encourage you to add a project in there. In terms of language support, we're still, most of our projects are still in English, but um, if that's something you're interested in, again, please reach out and we can communicate individually about that. So here's what we look at when we think about project management. And this is project management for citizen science projects that exist you know, outside of, of SciStarter. You're promoting your project, you're recruiting your project to find the right participants, you're getting your volunteers registered or signed up or some way to kind of have them involved. You're regularly communicating with them, collecting data, potentially equipping them if they need different tools. Then you're going to be evaluating your project and you want to build community. A lot of citizen science projects aim to kind of continue that community building from their project and beyond. So we'll be talking about the different ways SciStarter can hit a lot of these different elements of project management. So first thing is that we help promote projects and this is a free service that we provide when you register your project through SciStarter. We have a network of blogs, including Discover Magazine, Public Library of Science, National Science Teachers Association, um, Philly.com, and many others as well. So we help promote projects through that. Once your project is added, you're eligible for promotion there. Our project finder is also on other websites. So for example, PBS SciGirls right here. This is um, the SciStarter Project Finder built in. So just by adding your project to SciStarter, you're actually also reaching, potentially reaching this audience through SciGirls. Similarly, we have the Crowd and Cloud website, which was part of the four-part public TV series that launched this past spring. And the SciStarter Project Finder is embedded within that. So people who are viewing that web series are also being able to find your project potentially through that. What our uh, project finder is also available on individual websites, so people who are just managing a project might embed their project finder there, and you're going to be available, your project's going to be searchable through that as well. Later on as well, I'll talk about kind of how to get the information to embed these different types of things. So here's a quote from one of our project, um, project partners, um, Pietro from the Eyes on ALZ or Stallcatchers project. 
And in this quote, he talks about the number of monthly referrals that he's getting from SciStarter, even when he's not in an active recruitment um, campaign. So even if they're just kind of in a maintenance mode, they're still getting new participants through SciStarter and it's always helping them get new and more people involved. So next we're going to be talking about um, more specific recruitment of participants. So I saw a question about kind of how can we see who's in that area and this is where this is going to be answered. So first off, we have two things that have been added from um, what we can call that SciStarter 2.0. We have better um, GIS information with projects and participants, and then we also have an in-beta testing volunteer finder. So when you add your project once again, you can include really specific information about where your project can be done. So you, it could be, let's say, just in St. Paul. That's fine. You can include that information in there. And what that means on the flip side, when someone's looking for a project, um, first off, they can actually include within their personalized dashboard they can include areas that they like to participate in citizen science, and then your project's more likely to be one of their recommended projects because it's in their location. So for example, for this person, they might live in Chicago, but travel regularly to Los Angeles and San Francisco, and maybe they've got family in Arizona. And so they've included these as places they might wanna do citizen science. So the SciStarter system will help recommend projects that fit within those areas. When people are searching for um, citizen science projects, and this is available to anyone even if they don't have their SciStarter profile set up yet, they can again search for really specific information to find those local projects. And here's where that beta volunteer finder is for, for the folks who are asking about this. Um, what we have available, um, again this is kind of in testing mode right now, is an ability to sort of search within the SciStarter um, suite of volunteers, which we have about 35,000 people now registered through SciStarter, you could search for somebody who's in your particular area. Maybe you're launching a new campaign and you need people that live you know, within a certain area. You could look for people who have that. Maybe you're looking for people with specific interests, like your project, you wanna see who else is interested about birds, or um, maybe it's a skill that somebody has that is gonna be really important for your project. So this is another way that we're uh, letting you better recruit volunteers and being more specific about the volunteers that you are recruiting. Um, again, this is in testing phase, so I'm excited to get feedback from anybody who's interested in learning more about this tool or how they might use it so we can build it so that's something that's, that's useful for you. The next thing that comes with project management is getting your volunteers to sign up for your project. So if you are a, um, you have a login with your, project, you can actually use the SciStarter OAuth to allow them to sign up using your SciStarter credentials. So we all know that creating multiple accounts for everything that we try to do on the internet can be very overwhelming and we're often creating a new account to do any little thing. So as much as possible, it's easy to use that one login to log into multiple different opportunities. So using the SciStarter OAuth is one way to kind of get around that. And for those of you who um, are kind of interested in this, one thing I wanted to note is that the, there is obviously a technology barrier to be able to um, embed this type of technology. But what we found is that it, for most developers, once they connect with the SciStarter developer and get the information they need, it's a pretty smooth process. So uh, please don't shy away just because it, it seems like it might have a bit of a technology barrier. We'd really like to work with you to, to lower that barrier and, and get you started on this. So you can see the OAuth being used here and here for another project as well for SITSI Bio. As I mentioned at the beginning when I talked about kind of adding a project, I mentioned that you can have sort of a one-click sign up for your project. So this is what this might look like on a project page on SciStarter. So this is the Sparrow Swap project, and this is actually a project that manages its entire uh, volunteer group out of SciStarter. So this is where people find the project and they join it and they get managed right from there. So if you embedded that tool, you would be able to click to join that project and then you would be joined into that project. So for a volunteer, that's really great because it allows you to just get signed up right away. And on the flip side, as the project manager, it lets you have an easy way to manage your volunteers. So this is what we call our volunteer manager and this is a way to communicate with your volunteers. 
So every project on SciStarter has a volunteer manager. And this is going to show anybody who's um, like clicked to join your project, like let's say they have to join your project off-site, even if they click that join button on SciStarter and then they go to your website to do anything else that they need to do, that person's information is still within SciStarter here. So this offers an opportunity for you to um, reach out to people that you know were interested in your project and maybe they haven't um, registered yet or maybe you want to let them know about an upcoming webinar that you're hosting about your project. I know that the Globe Observer project has used this tool to kind of reach out and say, hey, we're hosting a webinar about our project. It's on this date at this time, you know, come join. And this is a great way to reach out to new people and communicate with those people, those volunteers. And again, we see that a lot of volunteers don't continue to participate in projects because they maybe don't hear back or they don't get that feedback that they, they need to kind of take that first step. Recently, we've also um, created this opportunity for people to directly message a project. So on your project page, there will be a button that says that they can message your project. So again, this is an opportunity to um, be able to communicate with people who are interested in, in, in your project and maybe they've hit a barrier along the way and they need some feedback from you. So it could be, um, you know, hey, I, I tried to sign up and I saw a glitch and I'm not really sure what to do next or where do I find this tool? I, I don't really know what I need to do with that. So it's again, a good opportunity to communicate with those volunteers, make sure you're reaching back out to them when they're interested and um, continuing to help them stay engaged in citizen science. So SciStarter is also starting to test out ways that we can help with data collection. So I see a question that just kind of popped up about different web-based citizen science services, um, mentioning iNaturalist and sitsci.org, and what does sort of SciStarter look like compared to those? So one thing is that we um, have a variety of projects. So we have projects that are online only, projects that are in the field. It's really an opportunity for people to find projects across any topic or activity. And then we're also testing out some of this data collection ability, which is for people to um, actually have data collected for their project right through SciStarter. So the example I'm showing up here is a project that is um, called Stream Selfie. So this is still a customized feature that we built with these project leaders, and it allowed them to collect data right from SciStarter. So the person was interested in the project on SciStarter, they clicked to join it, and they went right into being able to collect that data. So we can include information about location, uploading um, pictures, adding text boxes, check marks, all of that kind of stuff with data forms. Um, and we are looking at making this more of an embedded feature, but right now it is more of a, a customized where you would reach out to us and we would work with you to create this type of data form. So again, what does this look like on the um, project manager side? Here you can see this is Stream Selfies um, project page and their, their project dashboard, and they're able to um, manage and download any of that data, manage their map and photos, and get all of that information downloaded so that they can analyze it or do whatever they need to do with it next, right from that size starter. So I see another question that I'll go ahead and address, which has to do with um, age of volunteers within SciStarter. So um, with the, um, with um, online child um, with COPA and different privacy laws, we have that people have to be 13 or up or have permission from an adult to join SciStarter. So there is, um, we do have tend to have more registered users who are older. Um, however, I will talk about at the end an opportunity, a partnership that we have with the Girl Scouts that has, um, and has volunteers that are you know, kids and school-based ages as well and how we might be able to provide tools for that. Okay, so we've gone through managing data collection and another important part of um, managing your project is equipping your volunteers. So we have a in beta um, uh, tool finder, which allows people to find tools that might be useful for projects, figure out where they can, um, what we call build it, buy it or borrow it. So whether or not they want to, um, it's something that they could get downloadable instructions for, if it's available for loan from a library, or if there's somewhere that they can purchase it. 
So here's kind of an example of what that tool page might look like. So it has an example of the tool information about it. And then um, over here it has, again, this is just kind of a, a test right now, but it's showing different projects that that tool might be able to be used with. And so this would offer the opportunity that if I owned, you know, a phone lens and I wanted to use it for a project, I could see, you know, three or four projects that I could actually use that tool with, even though maybe I bought it just for, you know, my own enjoyment or something like that. So if you have um, a tool that you use for a citizen science project, if you are somebody who has created a tool that's low cost that you think would be useful for citizen science projects, I've included that link there at the bottom um, for how to add your tool into the SciStarter database. So why is this kind of important? And this is sort of the, the graphic I have for thinking about the tool. Um, your tool is then available for project managers who are looking to find a low cost tool for their project. It's also gonna be discoverable. So when people are starting a new citizen science project and they're trying to kind of find all those different components that are gonna make a good project, your tool will be discoverable so people can find it that way. And then I also say that volunteers can find your tool. Again, if I'm somebody who already has a tool that's, that, I, um, that I want, I might be able to find a project to use with it, or I'm gonna find a new tool that's gonna to help me answer another question or participate in another project. So this is still very much in beta form and testing, and um, right now we're building out that, that tool database. So please, again, add a tool if you have one, or if there's something you think we might wanna look into, um, you know, send us an email and we can see if it's something that's already within our database. So next I'm going to talk about um, our SciStarter contribution tracking and what we consider our affiliate program. So this is another big part of our SciStarter 2.0 NSF funded grant to really provide new and different tools for the field of citizen science. So this allows a us to track contributions to a variety of different projects. So I'll kind of move ahead just to this slide because I think this might help kind of visualize it. With our SciStarter affiliate program and our contribution tracking tools, again, we know that the, the landscape of citizen science is broad and we know that people are participating in different projects of different topics and different types across this landscape but we often only think about or look at projects sort of in their bins separately. And this allows us to kind of track participation across different projects and get a, a better idea of what that field looks like broadly. So going back to sort of the goals of this, first off, our contribution tracking allows a centralized project agnostic place for recognition and tracking for citizen scientists. So it provides a place for people to start to then participate in those multiple projects, to come back to, to continue to participate again. It also helps provide better research into learning goals so we can have a better understanding of how people participate in projects across that broad scale. And then for you as a project leader, by using these different tools, you can actually get enhanced analytics about your project participants. So um, you know, think about the different questions that you might wanna know about your participants. You don't necessarily know what other projects they're participating in or if they've participated in something in the past. And these are new tools we're developing to answer some of those questions. So here's again is this kind of broad look at this and these are some of the different projects that have worked with us within this initial phase to implement these contribution tracking tools. So there's two main tools that I'm going to talk to you about today for becoming part of this affiliate program and um, you know helping your volunteers track their contributions and earn credit for contributions. The first one is what we call the SciStarter Snippet. So what this is, is this is an opportunity for you to easily embed this on your data confirmation page. So what this looks like is if somebody is not a SciStarter member, it kind of puts this little message up there after they've participated in your project saying, hey, you know, feels good to contribute to science. Would you like to do more? you can sign up for SciStarter. And if they wanna do that, it actually lets them sign up right from that page. So they don't need to um, you know, leave your project site to then start to track contributions through SciStarter and help to find more opportunities to get involved. If somebody already is 
a size starter member, it promotes a different message that just sort of confirms that, hey, you're a size starter participant and these are all going to be shown in your dashboard. So I'll show you kind of in a moment what that looks like from that volunteer experience side. So this is sort of the easy um, embeddable snippet. It's available on, once you've added your project to SciStar, it's available, available on your project dashboard. Uh, so right where that arrow is showing you there, it kind of shows you whether or not that's already been enabled for your project. And then what that looks like. So it's a really simple script that can be embedded into your project data confirmation page. And what I mean by data confirmation page is think about the page that, um, you know, let's say somebody enters all their data, they hit submit, and then there's that next page that says, you know, thanks for participating. You know, here's what you're helping us to understand. Here's what we found in the past. On that page is where you can embed that snippet, and that's saying, great, we know that they've participated in this project. Alternatively, we also have a participation API. And so I've pasted just some of the information kind of details again about the API. But what this allows us to do is have a better understanding and um, tracking of the person who's participating in the project and getting them that credit for that contribution. So with the SciStarter participation API, it's based on the email address that somebody logs into your site with so that they're able to that we're able to confirm that that's the same person and give them credit on their SciStarter dashboard. So we really encourage people to use this method um, because it allows, it, it's just a little bit um, of a more precise connection between the person participating in the project and getting that, that um, confirmation on their SciStarter dashboard. So again, I've included the SciStarter.com slash API link up there if you're interested in learning more about this. And again, there is this is something that has technology and has development behind it. But what we found from many people is that this is something that can be easily implemented um, with a developer. Once they've talked to our developer, gotten all the information that they need, it's usually a fairly quick implementation. So again, please reach out if you're interested in it and we can kind of help get started along that process. So some of the feedback from our proj initial project owners have been positive, especially about, you know, the ease of implementation of our snippet, which is really supposed to be the lowest barrier for us to have that contribution tracking to become part of our affiliate network of projects. So Connie Walker from Globe at Night he was saying it was very easy to implement that part of the snippet um, and didn't, didn't need any additional development or technical expertise in order to make that happen. Now the bottom quote here is from Julian from Coco Ross, and this is his kind of um, perspective is starting to show a little bit about what the benefits of becoming part of the SciStarter affiliate network and how that is benefiting him as a project leader. So by using these affiliate tools, he can actually learn more about his uh, participants within the project because he's unlocked sort of um, affiliate only tools within SciStarter. So that's what I'm gonna talk about a little bit next. So what again are those benefits to affiliation uh, from an evaluation point of view? It helps to provide more what we call unsiloed data about citizen science. So it shows the, sci the participation kind of outside of their bin, sort of brings it all within one bin to, to look at and to understand. Once you embed these different tools, it also increases recruitment potential within SciStarter. And what this means is that when we have different partners that we work with that are looking for kind of a curated list of projects, we tend to select projects that are part of our affiliate network because it um, provides that partner actually better data about what their group is doing. So if they are interested in having people participate in the citizen science project, um, we look to those affiliate projects to recommend because those are the projects that we're able to give that organization back information about how their participants are doing. Point number three, which is what Julian referenced in that previous quote, was understanding enhanced on-site analytics about his project. And then number four is access to that volunteer finder that I mentioned at the beginning, and that will eventually be a, a tool and benefit for folks within our SciStarter affiliate network. So these on-site analytics, what does that look like? What is the benefit of that? So here's information from a, a project that uses our affiliate tools. And it's kind of this crazy pie chart, um, but what I see is um, that 
here it is showing um, people who have joined this project. In this example, I use Eyes on ALZ. What other projects within the SciStarter network are those people joining? And what's really interesting here is it lets you sort of start to understand what are your participants doing outside of your project? Where are there potential partnerships that you may not have identified earlier? Um, for example, you know, you might see people who are doing your bird watching project or also doing a project about light pollution. And maybe there is an opportunity for you to partner there because you might have participants in common already to collect new data and answer new questions. Or you might see that um, people who are participating in your project about Alzheimer's, for example, with eyes on ALZ, you might think, oh, they're gonna also participate in medical projects, but it might be that they participate in projects that we tend to see a lot of older um, retired participants per participating in, because it's more about a connection between topic, between the topic of Alzheimer's and aging and the top and information that other participants like to other projects that participants like to um, be involved in. So again, it's a lot of analytics that you're going to start to get um, to get and to learn about and to learn more about your participants outside of your individual project. Okay, so what does this all look like from the volunteer experience in SciStarter? So like I mentioned at the beginning, SciStarter aims to be very participant focused and the tools that we create for project owners, ultimately we want those to reflect on a positive volunteer experience both within SciStarter as a whole and within the broader landscape of citizen science. So here is um, the participants dashboard. So here's where they kind of get that um, holistic view of their contributions within citizen science. So this is an example of a, a you know, test dashboard that I've created. So I can include information about you know, where I live and where I like to participate in citizen science, um, what my interests might be, uh, what instruments I have, what, other, what tools do I already have at my disposal that might be beneficial for participating in a citizen science project. And then within my dashboard, I can see a lot of recommended projects that are going to be ones that I might want to participate in that I might not have found without, you know, having this kind of recommend recommender system that uses this information to provide those more personalized recommendations. I can dive deeper into my projects and the ones that I've participated in by looking at my projects, bookmarks and events, and I can see what I've participated in. Maybe I haven't participated in that project in a while and I want to get back involved in it. Maybe that project um, you know, is no longer active, but I want to see another project that's similar. I've got related projects down here that I might want to get involved in. Um, if it's a project that uses our contribution tracking, I can actually see my participation history over time. For this example, I haven't, haven't made any contributions in a while, so it shows that line, but it would show those contributions over time. It also provides an opportunity for that citizen scientist to kind of have a public facing view of what they what they are and who they are as a citizen scientist. So here's an example of my profile. So here's where we start to kind of build community within citizen science. So this has again information about me. It has, um, you know, a little bio about myself. I could put whatever I want to, you know, want in there that kind of describes me as a citizen scientist. It shows people the different projects that I've joined, um, my contributions to affiliated projects, anything that I've bookmarked that I might have been interested in getting involved in. So it starts to provide an opportunity for citizen scientists to really showcase themselves as that multifaceted, multi-project participating person that has all of these different components within, within one person. So this is again where that sort of SciStarter dashboard to uh, you know, what we say drive participation, participation and research in citizen science. This is where that sort of participation, participant view of SciStarter comes, comes in. So the last group, or the second to last group that I'll talk about here is sort of SciStarter for research and evaluators. What does it look like um, to use SciStarter for research and evaluation and what sort of opportunities do we have there? So the first thing that I'll mention is we have, I have this URL up here, scistarter.com slash research. That's a good place to start to kind of see what uh, research projects we've been involved in in the past and what we're looking for in the future. And then the one tool that I wanted to mention is what we kind of call our magic eight ball. 
of um, analytics and understanding citizen science projects. So this is an opportunity to kind of get that like quick look at what do these different projects look like. Um, you can search and understand by what activities. So you know what projects are um, can be done at home. What projects are online? What are you know at museums? What are you know on a walk? What audience are they? Are they projects for kids, adults, seniors, location, are they outdoor, indoor? What skills are involved or gained from doing the project? What topic do these projects cover? Are we seeing a lot of ecology projects? Are we starting to see a, you know, a growth in the number of projects added to SciStarter that are medicine or health related? How is that might be changing over time? What projects have classroom materials available? What projects are indoor versus outdoor? And what are you know online only projects? So this surveys the entire um, database of SciStarter citizen science projects. So it serves um, about 1,600 different projects. So again, you're getting that kind of quick glimpse at what this looks like. So what does it look like when you kind of use the Magic Eight Ball? Um, it'll give you a pie chart like this. I picked the most basic one to just show you what it looked like and not ruin all the surprises of getting to play with the Magic Eight Ball. This is online versus non-online projects. So um, we see about a quarter of the projects are online only projects within SciStarter and three quarters of them are not online only projects. So again, that's like that quick glimpse that you're be, you would be getting from these initial research and analytics. But really here is an opportunity for me to ask you guys for feedback and to let us know what you're interested in. This is something that we're really starting to develop and we wanna know, um, you know, what is it that you don't know about your volunteers that a tool like SciStarter and the, the information available might help you answer? Um, what is it that you, you don't know about projects out there within the field of citizen science that you would want to be able to answer through something like this? And with that, our profile system of being something that encompasses multiple different projects, it is more you know, all encompassing than individual profiles on individual projects. So what is the potential there to ask new questions to get more information? So again, this is very much a, a opportunity for you to provide us feedback. Uh, Karen Cooper at NC State is our director of research. So if this is something you're interested in or if there's been a question that you're curious about, um, please send her that information and we can begin to have that conversation. Okay, so the last part I'm going to talk about is um, SciStarter for those STEM resource providers and for folks who might be wanting to encourage others to get involved in citizen science, but you may not necessarily run a citizen science project yourself. So there's sort of two ways that we um, look about adding, first off, adding SciStarter to your website. And this is what I mentioned at the beginning where I said, you know, when you add your project to SciStarter, it goes out to all these other um, websites that use our project finder. So the first option is sort of a, a DIY widget builder. And this is really easy. It just, you know, you pick like, do I want to just show the featured project on SciStarter? Or do I want a project finder? You know, and it will build a little widget, give you the code and you embed that in your website. And, or would you want something that's more customized? Do you want to kind of put your own skin on it? So the first one looks like this example that I showed at the beginning. This is Karen's website. This is something that she you know, created and posted and embedded in there. Um, and she said before, you know, this is, was super easy for her to do and it offers the opportunity for people just to find a project right there when they find her website. Here's the example of more of that put your own skin on the API if you're interested in um, embedding the project finder to kind of be a part of your website or really, um, you know, embedded within that user experience of your own site. This is more of a customizable feature and you could also um, customize the types of projects that show up. So for example, with SciGirls, this is a PBS Kids website where they want to only show projects that are good for kids. So they have created the API to only be pulling and displaying projects that are marked as good for kids within SciStarter. So that's how they chose to do this. The crowd and cloud, for example, with this one, um, this is again pretty much all of our database where they wanted to not just search by topic and activity, they wanted to be able to have the keywords, have people search by the location, by the age group that they were interested in. And this allowed a more customizable look at 
the SciStarter Project Finder. And the last thing I wanted to mention, and this is kind of a sneak peek of some of the new things that we're working on, and this is a um, curated citizen science portal. So some of you may have heard of our Think Like a Citizen Scientist journey that we partnered with the Girl Scouts to do. The first part of this launched in July, which was for Daisies, Brownies, and Juniors. And then in um, October, we launched more projects for the older girls within Girl Scouts. So what does this look like? Kind of how does this function as a opportunity for as a, as a resource provider? So what this curated citizen science portal is, is first it provides a curated list of projects. This is again where, um, you know, us and that organization select projects that are fit for the audience. So again, for Girl Scouts, they wanted projects that were good for kids that didn't have a lot of complicated tools that were needed. Um, and we hand worked on with them to select projects. With this portal, we're also able to, to embed specific instructions and guidelines for a group. So if there's something that your group needs to do as, it, as they step through the process, if they need to you know, participate in the project, submit their data, and then write a reflection or you know, post a photo of them doing it, we could add in those different components. Uploading PDFs, um, for instructions as well as allowing people to upload documents after they've participated. And the ultimate structure of this portal is sort of um, group and leader. And so for example, with the Girl Scout portal, it's volunteer leader and then Girl Scouts. You could think about it as teacher and students or um, you know, manager and team if you think about a corporate organization. And um, it allows different permissions for those kind of staggered groups. We can also track organizational progress. So if you are the person who is kind of, um, you know, putting this out to your group and you wanna see what folks are doing, we can embed um, tools to get you that information and those analytics back. So I'll show you a little bit of what this kind of looks like from the Girl Scout portal point of view. Um, and I know folks over this period have kind of wanted to see it into this. And um, one of the reasons why specifically the Girl Scouts portal isn't something that we've opened up for everybody is again um, with the many of the many of the participants being uh, girls with their parents we have to kind of keep it behind certain um, closed doors so i know folks have been interested in kind of seeing what this looks like so hopefully this gives you an opportunity to kind of take a peek behind that curtain um, without getting in there too deep yet so here's kind of the start of what that portal might look like where you could select you could have the curated projects that you and size starter have picked out um, and then they select a project. For this example with the Girl Scouts, they asked for videos. So we embedded videos that came from the project scientists so that the girls could hear from the project scientists before picking and choosing which project they wanted to participate in. They're then able to pick the project that they wanna do. At the top here, you'll see more information about, you know, we custom created descriptions and project instructions that were, um, you know, girl friendly that were friendly towards this Girl Scout audience is kind of how we viewed this. And so we created instructions that would be really easy for them to get started in the project. They then can um, enter their data on the project. For example, some of these projects had their data collection directly through SciStarter, so they were able to enter that data and participate right away. And here's sort of a mock up of what that um, management page looks like from an organizational point of view. So Here's where you as that resource provider could take a look at, you know, how many people are participating, how many volunteers do we have, how often are they participating, who's going through the whole process, are we losing people at a certain point. A lot of opportunity here as well. So this is still very much a customized um, portal. It's something that we would work directly with you on if you're interested in it to kind of develop what does that look like, what are those types of projects you're looking for, what is that um, group structure that's important for you in terms of managing your project. So if you're interested in this, again, um, please reach out and we'd be happy to kind of talk to you about what this might look like. So I'm just going to wrap up here with reminding you of these four different audiences to sort of see where, um, you know, SciStarter fills many different roles. Like I said, this is a broad sweep across four different areas that I could probably do two hour webinars on each individual audience. Um, so if there's, I've probably created more questions than I've answered and I understand that. So, um, but I hope you can see that we 
are a participant focused platform helping engage and continue um, engagement in citizen science across a wide variety of projects for our participants, providing tools for project leaders so that they can get involved in the, that they can um, help people get involved in the project and better manage their project, providing tools for research and evaluators. Again, a big opportunity here for um, you to let us know what you're interested in and to make sure that we're serving you. And then finally, we help provide resources for those folks who want to promote citizen science and get people engaged in using citizen science, but might not necessarily run a citizen science project themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and leave um, this slide up here. These are our contact information. So um, you can feel free to, to email me and then I can kind of get you in the right direction of what your question might be if you have a more specific customized question. I'm happy to answer questions that are uh, more general at this time, but if there's any of those kind of deep dives, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, I do see one question that came into the Q&A that I'll just answer right now, which is, is there a cost to using SciStarter? And there's not a cost for adding your project to SciStarter. There's not a cost for, um, you know, being eligible for blog promotions or, you know, being and you know, having somebody write a blog on your project and, and having that go out to discover in Public Library of Science. Um, the features that do cost, for example, would be that last curated um, citizen science portal. That's still a customized feature. So that would still you know, be potentially on a cost basis as we would communicate with you. And there's also no cost for um, the participant who wants to find projects through SciStarter. There's not gonna be a cost for them to just search and get involved in the projects. Catherine, thank you so much for that webinar. And I will just add to what Catherine said that we can open this up to questions and answers. There's two options here. You may use the chat window and we can um, voice those questions. There's also a Q&A window. Uh, as we get more fluid with the use of this platform, I could explain to you the pros and cons of one versus the other, but please feel free to use either at this point and we'll make sure you can be heard. I will um, just say two things before we open that up. One, before folks stop, uh, start signing off for this, I'm going to add to the chat a link where you can provide some feedback on the webinar series in general. So please, we would welcome you to add more ideas for how we do these webinars, both logistically as well as topics that you might be interested in seeing in the forthcoming months. So please look for a link to that in the chat. Um, and I do also want to first, as we start moving forward with Q&A, acknowledge that Peter Donovan had his hand up for quite some time. Um, and as I'm looking here, it appears that he may have signed off at this point. Um, but Peter, if you end up watching this video, uh, please do email any of these folks directly with your question. But with that said, please do chime in here with your questions and we'll make sure that Catherine can spend some time responding. And I see two in the Q&A window. Um, one that says, is the volunteer manager function compatible with other volunteer management programs like Volgistics? Yeah, Catherine, that's, do you know? yeah that's a good question. So um, Volgistics obviously is, is um, you know, solely focus on volunteer management. So they have a broader suite of tools um, than, than what our current volunteer manager has. So it's a little bit more of a lighter touch for you to kind of have that communication option. Um, we, we have looked at, um, I mean, it does include information about if we have that person's um, like zip code, if they've included that. So if you want to look for, you know, uh, people by location, there's some kind of capabilities there. We are starting to look at um, having people's contributions tracked within that volunteer manager. So if you use one of our affiliate tools, that will kind of automatically pull in. But you could also, um, you know, if you get paper data sheets, for example, and you want to say, oh, this person, you know, participated, you can go into your SciStart or volunteer manager and kind of add a point of contribution for that person. Um, so those are kind of the tools that we're looking at right now. It does have the messaging capability, so if you just wanted to send a message out for folks, you can do that. The thing that it doesn't have is um, 
you know, where logistics, you could assign a pin and somebody could, you know, come volunteer if they're volunteering at a place or something like that. And you're tracking really specific time. It doesn't have that yet. Although that's something that we've been trying to kind of understand of how to calibrate um, contributions to time. Like is one contribution a minute? Is it an hour? It depends on the project. So um, I would say it, it explore it and see what you're looking to get from something like Volgistics. We might have it if you're not looking for a really deep dive into the volunteer management side. Okay. Um, Great, and I'll just chime in and say that Darlene has added some additional thoughts to that in the chat panel. Um, there's an additional question here from John Harlan, um, which I'll get to in just a second, but I will say that I've answered a question from Mike Baer about whether this is recorded. The answer is yes, and we will circulate the link once it is uploaded. So Catherine, John is asking, is there a way to search for projects that tie directly into parts of a science curriculum at different grades, whether those are very short term, like one or two days? Yeah, so currently not on um, not on like the public facing side of SciStarter. So when you add a project to SciStarter, what you'll notice is that there's a lot of questions that we sort of ask in the second part of that project that are more about um, skills, more about um, potentially where your project is funded from. Is it a you know USGS project? Is it an NSF project? Is it and that's more of that kind of research side of things where we're trying to understand that broad scope of projects. So if that's something that you were specifically interested in, we do have some data on that. We would have to work with you individually to um, pull the data that, pull the projects that fit what you're looking for. Uh, but that's a great point and maybe that's something, how I'm explaining it now is sort of what it's like currently, but that doesn't mean that in the future it's not gonna be, um, you know, a place where you could go on SciStar and you can get more of that information about the projects. So that's definitely something that we could um, look at moving forward. Okay, and then I see that Darlene's comment didn't go through to everybody, but it is through there now. Um, again, kind of referencing back to that volunteer manager question if you have a um, feedback about that. Any other questions? Great. Well, without uh, additional questions, I'd say that we have uh, kept to time incredibly well. Again, the contact information is there for everyone on the SciStarter team. Please feel free to be in touch. Thank you all for joining in this webinar and this webinar series. Again, there is a link in the chat to uh, a Google form where we are very much looking forward to ideas for advancing this webinar series, whether their thoughts on topics, thoughts on logistics, or even offers for um, helping to plan. So again, thank you all for joining. Really glad to have you. We will circulate a link to this recording and it will be available on YouTube. So uh, look for that coming your way um, within the next few days. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thank you Catherine. Everyone for joining. Thank you so much.